really amazing. When did you start doing magic, Chris? Uh, 11 years ago. I got it for my uh, my 40th birthday. I got lessons at the Magic Castle, as a matter of fact. Oh my and God. And you really liked so it. Cool. And I, but I've always done magic, but then I started right. seriously, mm -hmm. you know, right. doing it. Is there anything so. new in magic or is it, or is it always? There's so always something new. There's a lot, illusions, but a lot of the same, uh, a lot of the tricks are, the card tricks are like essentially the same. But just uh, different techniques. All right, we are live, guys. Nice. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is there a delay? I think so. Yes, we have a thirty-second delay, everybody. Good. Good. So shut off your um. YouTube sound. Anybody has YouTube on? Just shut that yeah, off. shut off your YouTube. With just different techniques. All right, we are live, guys. Nice. Yeah. Yay. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. Yes, we have a 30 second delay, everybody. Anybody has YouTube on? And go ahead and shut that off. Well, how do you, where? Where do you do that? I don't have it on, but I'm still hearing the delay. So I, put it I can hear it here. I don't have it on. YouTube sound. Oh, all right. Hello, everybody. Oh, somebody has it on. More than 30 seconds. 30 second delay, everybody. I can't figure it out. I can't figure my, if it's me, I don't know what to do. I don't know. Well, I think if you don't have YouTube open, it won't matter, right? Yeah. I don't well, know. Correct. Uh, we, we, we don't need YouTube open, so we can, no, we can all close our YouTubes. Yeah. Oh, maybe, David, is it on your, is it on your feed? Where no. do you close your YouTube? Well, Again, you we need, on it no, I don't have we it need on. IOTC. Just close your browser if you have it. <sighs> that feels good. We good? We are good. All right. All right. Yeah. Hey. All right. So I'm just going to introduce Tracy Lehman. She was the writer creator here and she's uh, up on the top row. Hello, everybody. And um, Tracy, start us off. Well, first of all, thank you for your patience. We, uh, we just troubleshot a, a, a quick tech issue. So thank you for that. Thanks for sticking in. Um, welcome to everyone watching safely at home. Um, we're very, very glad to have you. I know we have first responders and some frontline workers uh, watching as well. So special thank you to you. Um, that's why we're all here. So um, we were originally going to do a live read of the script just for fun and just to kind of give people something to do. But then our, our friends and family members and neighbors mm -hmm. who are frontline workers were really needing support. So we turned it into this fundraiser. Um, and I just want to thank everybody that you're going to see today. Thank you so much for, for um, joining this and joining the cause. We're so grateful. Every, all these wonderful actors and the beautiful people who are here for this cause. So um, I'm going to hand it to Dave and he's going to tell you about uh, the charity. Right. So... First of all, everyone, thank you for joining us. Thank you to the cast, thank you to the crew, thank you to everybody chiming in wherever you are. The US, Canada, I know we've got people in Australia and people up really, really early over in Europe. Um, so yeah, the reason we're here is to entertain you guys, make you laugh and raise money for this amazing charity called First Responders First. So it's an initiative between the public health uh, school at Harvard Thrive Global, a major charity organization, uh, CAA Foundation, and what they're doing is they're supporting the first responders of healthcare workers as they're working on the front lines, fighting to save those that we care about. Now, all the proceeds that we raise here, they're going to provide essential protective equipment, accommodations, childcare, food, mental health support, and any other resources that these first responders need. So now you're asking, how do you donate? It's easy. You can just go to this website right here, which is donate.tableread.online, and you can donate now, during the feed, at the end, tomorrow. This feed is going to live here as long as there is a need. So we're going to come back in the middle just to remind everybody, check in. Uh, I'm also going to pass it off right now to our illustrious director of this online event, Betsy Thomas, down in the center square. Hello everyone, and I am gonna say, everyone's already thank you, so I'm not gonna do it again, but I'm gonna now introduce our wonderful cast. 
and and I'm reading it. So here we go. Um, playing Leonard, we've got Gary Cole. Hello. Playing Linda, we've got Julie Bowen. Hello. Playing Danny, Alan Sudik. Danny's not. Alan's going to say hello. Alan's muted. He's muted. Ah. Okay. <laughs> I muted myself. Uh, oh, hi. <laughs> hello. This is a good way to find that out. <laughs> there we go. Playing Michelle, we've got Bella Lovell. Hi. We've got playing James, Chris Williams. Hello. Playing Winter, Brenda Song. Are you there, Brenda? Yeah. Okay. Oh, hi. Right. There you are. There you are. Okay. Um, and we've got playing Simon, Renee Goubet. Hi, everybody. Um, playing a few roles for us the administrator, Tiffany and Helen. We've got Carolyn Hennessy. Hello, everyone. Please donate. Playing Stella, we've got Summer Parker. Hi. Playing Alistair, we've got Kai Calhoun. Hi. Playing a, f uh, a couple roles here. We've got playing the judge and the automated voice. We've got Robert Picardo. Hello, everybody. Please donate. Playing the crossing guard and the waiter. We've got Tim Bagley. Hi. And playing Guy and the EMT. We've got Mark Leslie Ford. Hello. And we also have Alex Ryan is our narrator who's going to be re uh, reading the stage directions. And Alex, take it away. All right. Half Assed the Pilot by Tracy Lehman. <clears throat> Interior Rainbow Acres Leasing Office, Houston, Texas, Day. The leasing office of Rainbow Acres, an economical, independent living facility for people age 55 and up. Leonard Nelson, 65, a bitter, lonely man, sits across the desk from an administrator. He stares at a contract in front of him and scowls. It didn't say anywhere in this that I can't have sex here. Of course you're allowed to have sex, Leonard, but not in the dining hall. It was after hours. On the tables where people eat. Oh, that was just once. Well, I don't even want to discuss the laundry room incident any further. No one should have to see that. Third violation is eviction from the property. My hands are tied. Well, you can't kick me out. I have nowhere to go. That's elder abuse. Don't you have kids? Why don't you stay with one of them? Interior lower middle class duplex day. Michelle, 25, with dark hair and rounded shoulders from years of low self-esteem, and a guy 30s have sex beneath real tree camouflage sheets. A longhorn skull rattles above the headboard. They finish. Oh. Off of her scrolls through his text. Wow. That was incredible. Uh-huh. Uh, can I tell you something? Sure. That was my first time being able to relax and just feel good around somebody. I guess I'm like kind of a late bloomer, but I think I maybe didn't like really grow up with any good role models maybe. I'm just learning so much. I just wanted you to know that this means so much to me. And if- Phone buzzes. Oh shit. Uh, what's wrong? You, you gotta go out the back. Oh. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, do, do you still want to go to uh, Market Square Park on Friday? Blue October's playing. You gotta go. Oh, uh, okay, but I got two tickets, so... Exterior middle class duplex. He quickly ushers her out the back stairs. She is in her underwear, clothes and boots in hand. Uh, but I, I don't think I have all my clothes, so... Okay, talk to you later. He runs back up. Oh, we do have my, um... The back door slams. Shirt. Michelle looks around the building and sees a pretty woman approaching the front. The guy opens the door, greets the woman with a passionate kiss, and escorts her inside, closing the door behind them. Exterior neighborhood street moments later. Michelle, in her bra and pants, but still missing her shirt, stands beside her very messy, beat-up old car. She's in the middle of leaving a message. Uh, did I do something wrong? I, I saw that woman come to the door and you two seemed close. Uh, call me when you can. Everything's cool. I'm not angry. 
Um, I don't really know how all of this works. I mean, I know, I know we're not like boyfriend, girlfriend or anything, but um, does this mean you don't want to go to the concert? You have reached the maximum time allowed. Michelle hangs up and unlocks her car. As she opens the door, various trash from inside falls onto the street and blows away in the wind. She scrambles to pick it all up. Tiffany, 60, blonde, happily power walks by, stopping to pick up some of the trash. Here you go. <laughs> she hands some trash to Michelle. Self-conscious about her lack of shirt, Michelle uses a couple of pieces of trash to cover herself. Thanks. <laughs> oh, you bet. What? Wait, T Tiffany? Uh, oh my God, Tiffany, how are you? Oh, hi, do we know each other? It's, it's me, it's li Lil Michelle. Did you remember me? You used to hang out with uh, my dad when I was a kid, Leonard Cohen or Leonard Nelson. Oh, Leonard. She abruptly turns and power walks away. Confused, Michelle opens her car door, looking back down the street just as Tiffany turns back. I'm sorry you had such a shitty father. Thanks. Interior courtroom day. Danny, 35, in fitted dark clothes and looking like he wears a lot of cologne, stands before a male judge. Are you employed, Sam? Yes, sir. And where do you work? I am the night manager at the Crazy Fox. <laughs> well, that strip bar on Shepherd. I'm, it's, uh, it's a gentleman's club. Oh, I see. Excuse me. Danny glances back at Winter, 22, dressed to the nines, provocatively, shiny name brand everything, stands in the back texting under a no cell phones allowed sign. The judge flips through the thick stack of paperwork. Impressive record, Mr. Nelson. Thank you. I'm, well, I mean, there, there's been extenuating uh, circumstances. There, if you just look. I'm not actually, giving you leeway for things that happened 15, 20 years ago. Sure. It looks like you've been given plenty of second chances. Well, I, I knew I was late paying the tickets, Your Honor. Tickets, uh, but, plural. And you were late right. today as well. Well, I'm sorry, sir. It is, uh, it is just that my girlfriend has these uh, severe psychological uh, issues and uh, the crazy hot matrix if you've heard of that it is real and she is no unicorn okay he motions towards winter in the back who takes a selfie while snapping her gum uh, uh, let me get this right you want me to let three unpaid tickets and a warrant go because your crazy hot girlfriend over there has issues yes sir and what would possibly motivate me to do that May I approach the bench, Your Honor? You may. Danny approaches, discreetly handing the judge several VIP passes to the club. You and your friends can get into our VIP area anytime you want. You have some nerve, son. Free drinks? Of course. Of course, whatever you want. Will she be there? I can't arrange that. Yes. Case dismissed. Danny and Winter happily <clears throat> in the courtroom arm in arm. Interior SUV, Katy, Texas, day. A middle-class suburb of Houston. Mostly families and cookie-cutter developments. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What, what was that? Linda, uh -huh. 40, well-intentioned but preoccupied, drives fast, ear to her cell. She quickly pulls up to a school in a no-stopping zone. She speaks to her husband, James Perkins, 43. <laughs> I said, guess who just finished that big deposition? Oh, uh oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I got him to admit he spent her money on penis enlargement surgery. Oh, honey, that's great. That's great. A crossing guard taps on her window. Mrs. Perkins? What? Penis enlargement. I'm Linda abruptly hangs up the phone. Morning, Linda. I told you before, there's no stopping in this zone. Brandon, I'll just be a minute. Okay, you said that last time. Uh-huh, well, my kids are leaving early today. Okay, but you can't stop, Linda. 
It's 9.15, Brandon. Why are you even here right now? My ride's not here yet. You have to keep moving. Okay, okay, fine. Do you want to watch my baby so I don't have to wake him up? It'll be three minutes. I don't think it's a good idea to leave a baby in a running car with someone you barely know. Linda <sighs> opens the door aggressively and steps out of the car, ready for attack. I pay your taxes, which pay your paycheck, which technically makes me your boss. I don't think that's how it works. What works, Brandon, is we do the job you're supposed to do. My job is to get up at 5.30, make breakfast and lunches for everyone, and while one can't have dairy and one can't have gluten, then dress my husband for work. He's 43, but he still doesn't know how to tie a tie. Then I get the kids dressed and to school by 8. Only today, I had to come back again to pick them up for the dentist. So I'm taking care of everyone like I have my entire life. That's my job. I do my job. You work two hours a day. So your job's over until 2.15. Now get out of my way and let me do my job. Baby Angus, nine months in the back car seat, starts crying. Oh, oh, wonderful. She gets back into the car, door still ajar. You don't have to get so angry. I am not angry. I'm in a hurry. You seem angry. I am not angry. Just as two kids, Alistair, seven, and Stella, eight, hop in the car, Linda puts on her perfect mom face. Hi, sweeties. Oh, let's go. You don't have to listen to him. He's not even a real cop. Now, Stella, he's be nice to the crossing guard. He's just doing his job. Hmm? Linda slams the door. Tires screech. She was totally angry. Interior, senior dormitory apartment later that day. Leonard angrily stuffs clothes into a large duffel while a security guard keeps watch. Leonard swipes prescription pill bottles off the counter and into his bag. Exterior, Rainbow Acres apartment building moments later. Leonard, carrying his large duffel, is escorted out of the front of his building by security. The guard locks the door behind him. Enraged, Leonard kicks the door in anger. This place is a shithole. You ought to pay me to live here. You're here. You're lucky I don't report you. He glares at the guard through the window, slams his fist into the door. I don't want to live with you all either. You just lost the best man there. Two female residents look out through the window. Ask them. I can see and drive and get it up. One of the women mouths, I love you, to Leonard from the window. The other whimpers softly. The security guard ushers the women away, closes the curtains. Y'all miss me. Helen, 60s, a homely Rainbow Acres nurse in scrubs, peeks through the curtains, catching Leonard's eye. She waves compassionately. He discreetly waves back. She lights up with a smile, then slips away. Leonard looks around. Realizing he has nowhere to go, he opens his flip phone, scrolling through the directory. There are only three contacts, Danny, Linda, Michelle. Interior, Linda's SUV. Linda drives. Stella and Alistair, wearing baseball uniforms, are in the back glued to their iPad and iPhone. I just ordered pizza for dinner. Hello, can I get a, a thanks, Mom? Well, okay, then I think I'll just cancel since it seems like no one cares. Yep, I am just gonna cancel that pizza since no one oh. rings. Oh, who in the world? She answers on the, on the car speakerphone. Hello? Linda. Leonard. Dad? Exterior street. We see the SUV suddenly swerve and veer off the road. Interior SUV. Linda quickly looks back at the kids. You have a dad? Well, um, kind of, you know, just play your game. Linda takes <sighs> the phone off speaker. Where have you been? Where have you been? Is this a new number? That's one of those pay as you go deals. They try to rip you up at those contracts and this one seems to get answered more often. Oh. Listen, Lynn, uh, we should see each other. Well, what did you do this time? I want to spend time with you. Why, so you can manipulate me in person? Let's have dinner tomorrow. 
we haven't seen you in two years, Dad. You dropped off the face of the earth. We had no idea where you Who were. Who could to Beppo, 7 p.m.? Which one? The one by your house. You're in town? I never left. What do you say, kiddo? Come and have dinner with your old man. Well, our last sitter won't come back again, and we'd have to get that awful backup girl. I hate hers. I give her a call. We'll make sure it's a nice night. You'll help me like you used to, remember? I could always count on you. I miss you, Lynn. What do you say? Oh. Sure, whatever you need, Dad. All right, then. <sighs> I'll see you tomorrow. Hello, Dad? He's gone. Did you order pepperoni or what? Interior Crazy Fox later. A high-end gentleman's club. Danny, wearing a suit and walkie with surveillance earpiece, approaches the bar. Uh, who is it? The barback shrugs, hands Danny the club's cordless landline. Hello? In the main room, two women dance on stage in front of a half a dozen well-dressed men. Winter sits at a table, drinking and chatting up an older man in a suit. She notices Danny slip out on the phone. Winter suddenly leaves the suit mid-conversation. As he turns, we see he is the judge from earlier. Interior crazy talk hallway. Danny's mid-conversation on the phone as Winter walks up behind him. Who is that? How did you get this number? Who is that? She reaches for the phone. He gently puts her in a headlock. Like, come, look. Danny yeah, has to go. He's. I have to go. Yeah. Danny hangs up. Who is that? Huh? Tell me. What's this skate's name? Leonard. Bullshit. It was my dad. He's trying to get me to have dinner tomorrow. Oh my god, honey, that's so awesome! I want to go. I've never met any of your family. No, and you never will. But this is our first chance to put the family oriented. If you cared about me, you'd introduce me to your family. I do care about you, and that's exactly why I haven't. Look, I don't ever want you to see him. If you don't take me to that dinner, we are over. O V E R. Over. Okay. She glares at him. Danny looks at her, debating. <sighs> Exterior street, interior beat up car, evening. Michelle, with a tear-stained face and wearing sweats that look like pajamas, looks at her cell. No mist calls her texts. <laughs> she looks out, eyes landing on a bus stop ad of a happy family with a lightning bolt splitting them up. Beside it, a photo of James Perkins, 43, in a bad suit which reads, not every family should be together. Call 713, break up now. <laughs> Michelle stares at the sign. Then, with renewed hope, wipes her tears away and dials another number on her cell phone. Exterior middle-class house. Linda, in a robe and her hair in curly, holds the phone to her ear while laying a tacky suit and tie on the bed. The kids run around her, playing loudly. Her phone buzzes. Rhonda, Rhonda, I so, I want to hear the story, but just hold on a second, I'm getting another call. Hello? Uh, uh, is this Linda Nelson? Nelson, no, not for years. Please just take me off your list. Uh, no, wait, 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 wait. Um, it's uh, it's me. It's um, it's Michelle. Who? Uh, we have the same dad. Uh, I'm not sure if you've gotten my letters. I, I, I just wanted to. Um... Oh yeah. Hi, 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 Michelle. Haven't seen you since the incident. <laughs> I know. I know it was a long time ago, and to be honest, I don't remember it all that well. Don't you worry, because the rest of us sure haven't forgotten. Can you hold on for a second? I'm on the other line. Uh, oh, sure. Hey, look, let me call you back in a second. It's my sister, right? If you can even call a crazy bitch that. Ugh. Hi, Linda. It's still me. So. Oh, oh, okay. So I guess my friend hung up. That's okay. It happens to me all the time, actually. Um, I, I actually just saw your husband at a, a bus stop. And so I... I Wait, heard of is, who is he with? Oh, no, no, no. No, I just mean on, on the bench. It was an ad on the oh. bench. Yeah, but it, it made me think of you. And so I, I called his office and they gave me your phone number. And I guess I've been calling your old number this whole time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I said, shut up. <sighs> 
No, you shut up. Stella, hey, Stella, keep your hands to yourself, Allison. I said, stop. Uh, would would you maybe want to get together? I, you know what? I can't really. Dad called last night. Actually, he wants to have a family dinner, and so we're getting ready to meet him at Ed Buco de Beppo. Oh, you you are. Uh, can I come? God damn it! No more playing in here. Go go fight outside. Mommy's getting ready. But it's dark out. I, I might have just broken up with uh, my boyfriend. Well, he wasn't really uh, my boyfriend exactly, but you know, I don't know, I'm free. Um, and I'd really like to see everyone, uh, so. Okay, excuse, you know what, it just, Michelle, hang on just for a second. You drop the duster, you hear me? You do not dust your sister. No, you don't. And you're about to lose two days of screen time. Three, two. Uh, Linda? I... Linda hangs up. Exterior monster pickup truck evening. Truck nuts, sculpted balls, hang from the trailer hitch of a very masculine new truck. Interior monster pickup. Winter mm -hmm. puts on makeup while Danny drives. Oh, damn, I'm doing my makeup. Ba babe, I'm on the freeway. I don't care. I want to look nice for your family. You always look nice, and he's hardly my family. Well, I can't wait to meet him. Why didn't you ever invite me to dinner with him before? I told you, he left his first wife and kid, knocked up my mom, and then ran off. Came back later, till I finally ran off. One of his daughters has been trying to connect with me on Facebook. She did some kind of crazy shit years ago. Now she's the black sheep of the family. Oh, hey, that's amazing. Look, I don't want to talk about her. I've been trying to get away from anything to do with him. Some people say he had a breakdown. That's just an excuse. He's just an asshole. I'm not angry though. No, I just I, I just want to rub it in his face that I turned out well despite everything. Is it just me or is it hot in here? Uh -huh. Can we roll down the windows? I'm, I'm starting to sweat. I need some fresh air. Annie rolls down the windows. Stop the car. What? Stop the car, I'm getting out. Oh God. He carefully pulls over to the side of the freeway. Why don't you do that? You know it messes up my hair. She hops out, slamming the door and walking away. Danny drives alongside as cars peep, speed past, honking at him. What are you doing? She trips, breaking her shoe. She holds up the heel. Look what you did now. Look, this is not safe. Go around. Just go around. Why are you? you? Look, honey, get back in the car. No, you go to your dinner by yourself with your roll, stupid roll down windows. No, I don't want to go by myself. I want you to go with me. Well, you should have thought about that before you rolled down the window. All right, I must be nervous, you know, or, 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 or something. I need you. You know I need you. Would you please come to this dinner with me tonight? Okay. Fine, since it means so much to you. I don't know what's going on. I mean, look at this. Look at my hands. He holds his hand up. It's shaking. She takes it gently. Interior, Buca de Beppo. The waiter walks Danny and Winter to an empty table for six in the back, hands them menus. Look, I think there is some kind of mistake. I don't know, this is just supposed to be for three people. Oh, huh. I'll have you down as party of five. Shit. Maybe he's bringing a couple of his blonde lady friends. Winter and Danny sit. Of course, he's late. The waiter hands them both menus. Uh, uh, can I get a vodka, uh, vodka Red Bull, please? So we're going to take a moment and take a short break here. And David Reddy is going to use this opportunity to talk to us about this amazing charity that we're supporting. Well, guys, I want to say first off, thank you for hanging in there. Oh, everybody's got their signs up. So yeah, here we go. We're uh, looks like the, uh, the crew. Betsy, your sign is backwards, but that's OK. There we go. So yeah, I hope everybody's enjoying the show. I hope the cast is having a lot of fun. Uh, once again, we're here to help those that are helping us. It's the first responders first. So tweet it, Instagram it. Uh, please donate where you can. It's donate.tableread.online. And for those that have been asking, yes, this is tax deductible. So in this day and age, every dollar counts. Also remember, because every dollar counts, the first $100,000 donated is going to be matched dollar for dollar. 
So your $10 becomes 20, your 50 becomes 100. And you know what? Hey, your 500 becomes a thousand. But anyway, that's all I wanted to say. I don't want to break the rhythm. I'm going to throw it back to Alex. I hope you're enjoying it. And uh, I'm going to get my mug off of here. Have fun, guys. Exterior street, interior beat up car. Michelle drives her messy beater car while dialing a number. She waits, then. Uh, hi, Dad. Uh, Linda mentioned that you guys are having some kind of a family dinner tonight. Uh, I haven't seen you in forever. I just was wondering, um, did you want me there too? I'm really sorry about whatever happened at Alistair's baptism seven years ago. And I'm not sure if you've gotten my, my messages here or that's even your Facebook account, but. The car suddenly makes a loud shifting motion. Oh shit. Nope, sorry, that wasn't you. Um, I think my car just beep. You have reached the maximum time allowed. Oh, Michelle groans, noticing the check engine light is on, but she ignores it, pressing on. Come on. She pumps the gas, but the car dies in the road. A car swerves past, barely missing her, screeching tires. Several cars honk loudly. Exterior middle-class house evening. Baby Angus cries loudly. Linda, way too dressed up for Buca de Beppo, holds Angus, desperately trying to soothe him. Okay, it's okay, honey. Everything's okay. I'm right here. I'm right here. Come on, we're gonna be late for this thing! Baby Angus cries louder. James, from the bus stop bench ad, walks in, looking like he is dressed for Take Your Son to Work Day, wearing the tacky suit from the bed earlier. So he's our grandpa like Papa Bill? No. Yes. James and Linda exchange a look. Yes, sweetheart, like Papa Bill is dad's dad, Grandpa Leonard is my dad. Except Papa Bill is there for you all the time if you need anything. So that's why you remember him. And Grandpa Leonard is just there when he feels like it or whenever he needs something. And that's why we don't remember him? Yes. No. Interior, Buca de Beppo, evening. Leonard, now in a vintage bowling shirt, ill-fitting sport coat and stonewashed Wrangler jeans, enters. The waiter escorts him to the back. Leonard sees Danny, puts on a smile. There he is, come here. Leonard forces an unwanted hug from a very tense Danny. Whoa, who's this little spitfire? Uh, this is my girlfriend, Winter. It's an honor to meet you, Mr. Nelson. He's a very little about you. Well, I'm sure he doesn't like to brag. Let's get some dinner, shall we? They take their seats. Danny boy, look at you. How you been? I've been doing real well now, Leonard. I just got promoted at work. We have a brand new truck. Things are going great. And Winter and I have uh, been going strong for a while now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, almost three whole months. Exterior Buca de Beppo. Linda and James hurry into the restaurant. Linda looks at James, abruptly stops him. Wait. What, you okay? She looks at him. A quiet moment of connection, perhaps, but then she forcefully fixes James's tie. She takes a breath, calming herself. They walk in together. <laughs> Moments later, Leonard's cell buzzes. He looks down. Three missed calls from Michelle. He fiddles with his phone. Can't figure out how to turn this thing off. The waiter walks Linda and James to the table. Linda stops. Isn't that your half brother? There Leonard. He is. Ha hi. Dad, I didn't realize that this was a group thing. Well, you remember Danny, don't you? Yeah, I remember his mugshot. Uh, that was years ago. Uh, it was just a misunderstanding. I'm doing really well now because I, I got promoted at, at work. I got a brand new truck outside. Don't know if you saw that. Things are really great. Uh, he hasn't been in jail for months. Thank oh. you. Interior car later. Simon Chen, late 20s, well-built and dressed in a way that would please your mother, drives a spotless car, <laughs> the opposite of Michelle's. Michelle sits in the passenger seat. Thank you again for coming to get me. I really appreciate it. Oh, yes, my pleasure. I guess I'm just not used to anyone actually showing up for me. 
Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, that's what Uber's for. Mm. How's your night? Uh, not so great. Oh, I'm. I'm sorry. Um, you're uh, my last ride of the night. I think I've, I've been driving since like six a.m. Wow, that's a long day. I'm just going to a family dinner. Oh, cool. I love family. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, uh, are you all right? My family hates me. No, okay. I don't, I don't know your family, but I'm, I'm sure they don't hate no, you. No, they do. They haven't talked to me in years. Uh-huh. But, um, but thanks. She looks at her phone, reads something from her Uber app. Thank you, Simon. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. Um, he looks up, Michelle. reads her name on his app. Michelle. <laughs> he pulls the car to the front of Buca de Beppo and stops. Michelle looks out, but freezes, terrified to go in. Simon notices this. They share a look. Have you had dinner yet? Interior Buca de Beppo moments later. The waiter walks Michelle and Simon through the restaurant. Michelle looks out of place in her pajama sweats. Leonard, Linda, James, Danny, and Winter are mid-meal at the table toward the back. Here you go. Hi, Dad. Michelle, is that you? What a surprise. Uh, this is Simon. Hello. Michelle takes a seat. The waiter brings an extra chair for Simon. Who's her mom, Linda? Heard you only like blondes. You could bleach anything, James. Uh, sorry, we're late. Linda was just telling us about her uh, new son. Yeah, his name is Angus. Hang on, let me show you a picture. Nah, 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 that's okay. All babies look the same. Winter discreetly takes a flask out and pours more vodka into her vodka Red Bull while discreetly motioning for another. You two should get to know each other since you're siblings and all. But technically, we are half-siblings. Yeah, we're living proof that sometimes even three halves can't make a whole. <laughs> <laughs> Winter finishes her drink. The waiter delivers a second one. She discreetly pours more vodka from her flask, takes a sip. Danny slips his business card to the waiter, whispering something in his ear. The waiter nods. Linda notices. Uh, it's been a long time since we've all been together. Nice, isn't it? Have we ever all been together, Dad? You're the one who was Facebook mes messaging me. Yeah, I, I think you blocked me. Well, we were all together that um, one time. Was that your last wedding or when the cops were called on you? Never mind that. We're here now. That's what matters. Anyway, I was, uh, I was living in this facility, and it turns out that they have mold real bad. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So I, uh, I had to move out. Oh, that's awful, Dad. Where will you go? Oh, well, you know... They legally need to pay you to relocate you if, if they're kicking you out for mold. Uh, do you have a lease? I mean, I can look at it. You, know, you may have a case. No, no, no. It's not that, Jimmy. It, it got me thinking, and uh, I'm not going to be around forever. You kids used to say you wanted to see me, remember? Well, good news. I've become available, and uh, I've decided to move in with one of you. Linda takes a bite, chokes <coughs> Linda, what do you say? Well, um, you you lived with us once, Dad, and you weren't happy, and you're definitely not allowed back at that McDonald's. That was then. And, and now we have kids, so. Yeah, oh, and they're messy and loud. You don't like it. Oh, I love kids. Let me see that baby. Hey, it would be amazing to have some family around, wouldn't it? I, I would love to have you, Dad. I, I would love to have some company. I, I wanted to rescue a dog, but the shelter said no. Danny, you used to beg for me to spend some time with you. Well, now's your chance. That was when I was five. We could just also just talk about things, too. I mean, I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm kind of a mess. Uh, so maybe we could, you know, like work on ourselves and we could all get healthier. Oh, well, let's see what you look like after you've had three babies. Uh, Danny can bench press 400 pounds. I'd say he's pretty healthy. No, I, no, that's not what I meant. I think, I think if we could like spend some time together, maybe talk about things. Well, I don't want to talk. I've forgotten. I haven't forgotten what you did at Linda's kid's baptism, Michelle. 
Nobody can ever forgive you for that. Forgive what? Can, can someone please tell me? What did you do? I don't know. I was drunk. Michelle throws her arms up, helplessly defeated. Annie, come on, son. You say you're doing great. You got some time to spend with your old man? Oh, boy. Well, actually, uh, uh, we, uh, we got evicted. I mean, so we're just subletting a place now. They're uh, threatening to repo that new truck. Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure where we're going to be in a month or so. I can't believe this. What's wrong with you? How'd you all all grow up to be such a bunch of half-assed losers? <laughs> You're kidding, right? Listen to you all. No wonder Danny cries at night. Babe, please. It's okay. You, I don't cry. Hey, you're totally fucked up. You all are, and it makes sense. I mean, my dad was clearly awful since I became a stripper, but if I had a dad like y'all, I'd be a hooker. <laughs> Isn't it past your bedtime? It's past your bedtime, okay? My day's just starting. Oh, for fuck's sake. Winner downs her drink, motions for another. You sure you want another one, babe? Let's Make it a double. Okay. Oh, can I get you all anything else? A gun? Just the check. The owner would like to take to thank Danny for his hospitality at the Crazy Fox, and he would be honored to take care of this dinner for all of you. Whoa, 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 whoa. What kind of scam is this? Why would they comp our food? Oh, Dad, because for all intents and purposes, your son is a pimp. Hey, it is a gentleman's club. The waiter hands Winter another drink. Please, please stop. Clearly, she has had enough. Comping is an industry thing. It's fine. We just need to uh, leave a good tip. No, I'm not tipping at all. But that was probably a $200 bill we just got at no charge. Tipping's for good service. The service was bad. The food was slow. Michelle's got food poisoning or something. Look at her. She's a wreck. They all look over at Michelle, who is now hyperventilating. No, I'm fine. No, I'm fine. Everything's okay. Let's just all calm down, please. You know what, honey? You calm down. We're all fine. Just, uh, just, just put whatever you were going to contribute towards dinner. Uh, well, apparently, I need to save my money for my own apartment. I'm not going to give it to some waiter. Leonard stares Danny down. No, don't worry about it. Fine. Look, I can take care of this. I got it. I got it. Danny nervously pulls out his wallet, but suddenly... No! Put that away. I got this. She stands up, revealing a stack of $1 bills. My baby got the meal, and I got the tip. Winter proceeds to make it rain, sending the dollar bills flying everywhere. Um... Wait. Let's make this fun. I want something for my money. Winter points at James. Show me your dick! No, he is not doing that. Winter points at Simon. You seen his yet? Oh, no. No, he just gave me a ride. I drive for you Uber. What? No. I drive Look, for Winter, Uber. I see. Baby, please, could we just... Matt, uh, get yours for free. Winter looks around the room, oh. eyes finally landing on Leonard. You, you sitting over there like you've got a big old swinging dick. Everyone watches in shock. You will respect your elders, young lady. Now pipe down. Oh yeah? Well lay down the pipe, Grandpa. Let's see it, Big Daddy. What's wrong with you? You're all crazy. Y'all ruined my dinner. He slams his fist into the table, then shakes it in a rage. Plates and cups fall onto the floor. It's silent as everyone waits, watches, and assesses. The waiter walks in. All right. Who's ready for their complimentary group photo? I'll come back later. He leaves. You all sit here with your husband and your girlfriend and your Asian... I've got nothing, no one. So make fun of me all you want. I, I don't care anymore. None of you would miss me if I were gone. I, I, I got nothing left. Leonard picks up two to-go boxes of food and then walks out. 
Michelle stands. God. Are we supposed to let him go or go get him? I couldn't tell what he wanted. Linda, James, Danny, and Winter look at each other, unsure what to do. James eats pizza. Hey, hey, let's go. James packs up pizza and breadsticks. Linda pushes him. Well, I like these. These are bottomless. Come on, babe. Danny collects some of the dollar bills, looks around at the desk, then puts them on the table as a tip. He looks over at Michelle. You lost your shit. What? At the baby's baptism? And you blew up like this, Leonard style. You broke some stuff. You yelled a bunch of curse words in church. You shoved Leonard, uh, and the pastor fell in the water. He almost drowned. No way. I, I, I don't even know how to get angry. <laughs> well, maybe you do, or maybe you should learn. I don't know. I wasn't there. That's just what I heard. Annie helps Winter to her feet. Hey, hey, uh, thank you. Yeah, take care of yourself. He walks out with Winter, leaving a stunned but relieved Michelle. Exterior Buca de Beppo parking lot, moments later. Danny helps Winter out of the restaurant. Your family like me. Yeah, big. Yeah, they loved you. Well, look at that, truck's here, so no repo man yet? You two ladies have a nice life. You too, Danny. Oh, look. Simon points to the middle of the quiet main street where we see Leonard standing. Oh, no. Dad! Dad, get the heck out of the street! Leonard looks up, pretending to be crying. A single car slows down to a creep as the driver stares at him and passes. I just, I worked so hard to put tonight together. I, I, I know I'll be alone for the rest of my life. Just, just go ahead. Just, just leave. Get in your cars and go home. You'll never have to deal with me again. They all turn toward their cars. Leonard drops his act. Fine. My death will be on your hands. Simon dashes to Leonard, saving him from the empty street. He walks Leonard over, delivering him to his children. You should have just left him there. Here comes the guilt trip in three, two, one. Would be happier if I were just washed in the street, right? Of course not, Dad. Uh, I'll give you a ride to wherever you want tonight, okay? All I need is for you to give a shit and take me to your home like normal kids would. Now, you failed me. You failed us. I changed both your diapers. No, you didn't. Well, I thought about it. The most fatherly thing you ever did was leave. So just leave us alone. I'm sick. Tell us something we don't know. Wait, 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 Danny. What kind of sick? In the head. Maybe I always was. Intermittent explosive disorder. <laughs> Sounds like irritable bowel syndrome. Fuck your excuses. Sorry I punched you in the face, son, but intermittent explosive disorder. And bipolarized, borderline something, whatever. They got a list, but I'm, I'm on meds now. They say I'm getting better, but... Dad, Dad, I'm sorry you're sick, but... This... Look, look, I know you didn't have the best father in the world, okay? But family is family, right? He proudly puts his arm around Simon. Don't deserve our pity. You deserve to die alone. I'm done. That's how all you all feel? No, he's, he's just upset. Just come on, let's all just stick together. Look, I've already got three kids to take care of. Four, if you count James. What? Look, no mood disorder explosions are getting near my family, all right? Leonard looks around at each of his three children. I look at you kids, I can see I've clearly made some mistakes. He takes a step backwards. I've done some awful things and... Uh, takes another step back. If sticking around is going to hurt you more, then I don't know. 
The kids watch as he throws his hands up in surrender, taking a step backward into the parking lot. Dad? Stop! Tires screech as a car hits Leonard with a loud thud. Leonard falls to the pavement, hitting his head with a loud crack. The driver runs out dressed in scrubs. It's Helen, the nurse from Rainbow Acres Senior Apartments. No. Oh no, he's hurt. What do we do? Someone should call for help. Aren't you a nurse? Helen realizes this, tends to Leonard. <gasps> Everyone watches as Leonard lays on the ground, not moving. They look on in shock, horror, and guilt. Linda calls 911. Exterior Buca de Beppo parking lot moments later. An ambulance in on the scene and a crowd has gathered. Leonard, still unconscious, is lifted onto a stretcher by an EMT and rolled across the parking lot. Leonard's eyes flutter. He squints, opening them just enough to see Linda and Michelle walking alongside him as he's lifted into the ambulance. Helen stands nearby. Danny looks on, deep in thought. Winter still passed out on him. He looks at her. He's gonna be okay, right? Well, which hospital are you taking him to? Ben Taub. We'll meet you there. Who are you? Danny, with Winter now slung over his shoulder, takes a step in between Linda and Michelle. Where is family? Leonard hears this, slyly smirks in satisfaction as the ambulance doors are slammed shut. Cut to black. Yay! Yay! We read a thing! We read a thing! We read the words! We oh, read sorry. a thing! It's a read a thing for this! Really? half a wonderful script by Tracy Lehman. Great. Well, congrats, Tracy. Thank, thank you uh, all for participating in this. The cast, the crew, all the people that are still texting and sending questions. Uh, again, I'm not going to you know, keep reiterating this because you guys have been great so far, but we're here for a great cause. Uh, remember, it's donate.tableread.online. We're going to match the first $100,000, and then we're going to keep it going from there. And remember, this is for medical supplies, health and wellness, food, daycare, everything that these doctors, nurses, first responders need to help get through and save the lives that we care about while taking care of their lives. So through this whole thing, we've been getting a bunch of questions. So if you guys bear with me for a minute, we're gonna pull up some questions that we got texted. Um, let's see here, first up, um, so this is a very intense question for Gary. Where are you over there? All right. So Gary, um, they're asking, in Talladega Nights, did you get to hang out with an actual cougar? <laughs> uh, no, mercifully, no. And the reason being, I'm told, was that if everybody remembers Anchorman, they used a real bear. And Adam McKay, I heard overheard Adam McKay saying, "No, we're not going to do that this time. We're going to we're going to CGI the cougar, I believe. We had a little problem with the wild animal before, so I don't know the details of that, so I'm, you know, it's third party information." So fair enough. All right. Uh next one we're looking at is uh Brenda. So, uh we're being asked, uh you've done a bunch of great really fun roles. Uh, what are the types of roles that are most exciting for you now? And what advice do you have for aspiring actors that are just getting in? Um, my goodness, that's a lot. Um, I, I feel like at the older I get, the roles that resonate with me at 32 are so much more fun because it really feels like I get to act out my life on TV. Um, but yeah, I always love comedy. It always, I love making people laugh and I'm obviously a very like silly person. So I think it's my favorite comedies where I feel comfortable and I have the most fun. So I love it. I, I do love challenging myself, but I love comedy. Um, and for anyone trying to make it in this industry or just in whatever you want to do, whether it's a school teacher or an astronaut, whatever it is you want to do, if you have 
a, a dream and an idea, just don't let anyone tell you no. Like the sky's the limit. I'm a little girl from Sacramento who was walking in a mall who like wanted to be a who wanted to be on TV and didn't even know how to get on TV. Like thought you had to get inside the television to be on it. Um, and I'm living proof that if you really put your mind to it, um, work really, really, really hard and keep working at your craft, you know, anything can happen. Fantastic. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, we've got uh, we've actually got a question for uh, Julie and Chris. So we'll uh, we'll start with Julie. Um, now that Modern Family's done, are you taking time off? What's next? Oh, you're on mute. Hang on. I got you. I'm on mute. Sorry, I was trying to be respectful. Um, I had no intention to take time off, but then this little thing called COVID-19 has uh, brought us all so much closer together. So um, between homeschooling my three boys, uh, something I never wanted to do, and, uh, and, and then that means cooking nine meals a day and doing endless loads of laundry and also teaching three young men how to flush a toilet, which apparently has <laughs> never, <laughs> ever happened in their lives. Uh, I am busy, but not working. Um, I look forward to the end of this and I'm supposed to be doing a, a pilot for uh, Muchnik and Cohan who did Will and Grace. So we'll see. And Chris, um, now that Silicon is over, what's next for you? Um, I'm learning more magic. I'm a magician, so I'm learning magic and keep on doing that and writing, you know, and, and waiting for COVID-20. I'm, I'm not going to wait for that one, but uh, you hang in there for that. <laughs> um, this is going over to Alan. Um, so someone's asking, they've been watching you do everything and anything, and you're so diverse. What's been your favorite role of all time? And then, of course, why? Oh, wow. That's tough. Uh, uh, I did a show called Firefly. It was a uh, space show a long time ago now. And I made a lot of good friends on that show. So I, I think that one, that one ranks up there because it really changed my life in a lot of ways. But I'm doing one right now called Resident Alien that would be coming on the television soon. But there's this little thing called COVID-19. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that one I'm having, uh, truly, it's, it's gonna be on sci-fi, Resident Alien. And I'm, I play an alien, but it's very funny. It is a very funny, a very funny show, and I can't wait for people to see it. So right now, that's the one I'm living and loving, Resident Alien, which one day will be shared with the world. Uh, I forgot, I, I, have a, I have a show coming out on Friday called Upload on Amazon Prime. On Friday, Whoa, Friday? Called Upload, yes. Amazon Prime. I should have said something besides the magic, but yes. Perfect, we've got, we got uh, two more quick questions. Um, one is, uh, just came in, for Robert. So Robert, you're, uh, we'll un unmute you. Um, question is, um, what, two parts. What do you miss most about Star Trek? And then someone must know the inside track because they said, who did the best impression of you? Well, that's easy. Uh, Garrett Wong did the best impression of me. And uh, I, I, what do I miss the most about uh, Star Trek? Um, I guess probably, uh, I don't know. The, I, I know what I miss the least, and that is the wardrobe that had no pockets. Um, we have, we, uh, there are no pockets in the future. I don't know why. But if you got stuck with a phone number or a pencil in your hand at the end of a shooting break, you ate it or you stuck it up your sleeve. Um, apparently, they have no need for pockets. So that's what I hated about it. But I also want to say that, Alan Tudyk, you're working with our former pilot, Robbie McNeil, and he says your show is great and you are great, so I'm really looking forward to seeing it. Uh, yeah, he's the, yes, exactly. He's our, he's, he's our producing director, mm -hmm. former, former actor, still actor, and great director now. And great, well, as I said, he piloted our ship, but now he's piloting yours. In a I've piloted way. spaceships before. I know. I've crashed, oh, yeah. I've crashed three, so uh, I don't do that. Um, now. now we've got a general question. This is where everyone can unmic and we'll hear everyone chat over each other. It'll be a mess. But um, how are you guys uh, keeping your your sanity during quarantine? Anything new and exciting? Uh, I know Julie, you're uh, you've got some hats going. 
Uh, yeah. I, oh, they're I, great. I, yeah. No, I've been naming a bunch of hats. I don't have them next to me because I'm because I've given most of them away this week. I've been getting a lot of attention. I've joined the um, Anthony Fauci uh, fan club on Instagram, and I make I heart Fauci hats and PPEs for all MDs, RNs, and first responder hats. Uh, yeah, uh, that it keeps me really busy. That's that's it. I, otherwise, I would be climbing the walls. I have nothing else to do. <laughs> Anybody, Vela? What's keeping you busy? What's helping keep your sanity? Oh, um, I have to make sure that I go on a walk every day, or else I start, um, yeah, going a little crazy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so fresh air, walking outside, I would say. Great. And uh, and anybody wants to chime in? Um, what are you binging? What should we all be binging? Well, if you've done Tiger King three Other times than Tiger in a row, King. Oh, <laughs> Upload on Friday, Amazon Prime. Upload <laughs> Amazon Prime, May first. Cheesecake. Uh, cheesecake. Just oh, eating, binging on cheesecake. Great. Well, I'm I'm gonna wrap it up here. But if uh, you guys have a message to our frontline health workers, let's hear it. We're doing this for them. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope I don't see you soon. I hope I don't see you soon, <laughs> but thank you. This is, this is true. Well, all right, everyone. I hope you, and now I'm reading from my script, so sorry I looked down. Hope you guys enjoyed yourself watching and laughing with this incredible cast. Uh, also, we didn't get a shout out in the bottom corner, Tracy Lillianfield, our casting director galore, who helped put this together for us. Thank you, Tracy. Um, but again, keep donating, keep sharing the link, tell your friends. Um, this is not a one and done. This video will live on this site at tableread.online for as long as there is a need for donations and supplies and care for these first responders. So. Remember, it's hashtag first responders first, donate.tableread.online. Send the links, send your donations, and most importantly, stay safe, stay home, and please stay healthy. Thank you guys for watching. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. <laughs>